Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are now watching the telecast coming to you from Prayer Temple of Love Cathedral, where I, your humble servant, St. Richard A. Smith, is a pastor and organizer. We invite you to be a part of our services. Call a friend, call a neighbor, call a relative, and call somebody and tell them to stay tuned to this telecast right here on this station. I rise today giving honor to God of who's the head of my life, to my pastor, to the assistant pastor, to the ministerial staff, and to all the saints of God, I greet you all with love. Amen. If you don't mind today, I'm just going to go and get right to it. <clears throat> and I ask that you all stand for the reference of God. And I will be coming from the uh, book of Luke. This is one of four that I will be doing. Chapter 2. Verses 41 through 52. <clears throat> and it says, And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. And they sought him among their kinfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors and hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished in his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, Thy father and I sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in his heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. You can all be seated. Amen. 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 Now here you have a young 12-year-old boy named Jesus who went to a place called Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover with his parents and family and friends. And uh, considering he was 12 years of age, he was considered almost an adult back in then. So Mary um, went home after the feast, not realizing that Jesus was still there, um, left behind. They thought he was like in their company, uh, like their little cast of people they was with, the family and friends. They thought he was in one of the vans, the caravans. Yeah, traveled in one of the vans. It was two little, little vans. So, um, and the women and children would usually travel in the front van, and, and the uh, men would travel in the back. But Jesus could have been in either one of those vans. <clears throat> Then they looked at him as almost an Adele. When they found out that Jesus was in either van, Mary was in a panic, frantic, 
kind of feeling worried about our child. You know how you mothers get and parents get that it, if you went to went on a field trip and um, your child get lost, they you, you, you can't find them. The teacher probably have to go looking for them and looking for them and find them. And, and you probably will find them in a spot that they, that they are amused by. They had, something has caught their attention. So Jesus was, was, was back at the temple still, but the mother had no idea. So after, the, after three days, they returned back to Jerusalem looking for Jesus, only to find out that he was in the midst of doctors and teachers, learning about his father's business. Though his mom was bothered by the fact that he stayed behind, she still understood his reason deep inside her heart. The people were blown away of how much interest Jesus showed and how much how many questions and good questions he asked and so he was concerned and really wanted to learn about his father's business he was no longer looked at as a boy but many but mary then found him as a man then jesus grew up in wisdom and stature in favor with god and man I'm going to go down to uh, a different verse, chapter Peter, 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. If you can, pull that up on the screen. Amen. And it says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guilt and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. In these verses, Peter is talking about growing as well. When we first begin to go to church, some of us are lost. We don't really know what we are looking for, and we get kind of turned around and don't know how it's going to turn out. Amen? We are what Peter said, newborn babes in the kingdom. When being a newborn babe, Everybody knows you have to feed the baby one milk. Amen. It is its only source of eating food or get or eating food. I'm sorry. But as the baby gets older, you gradually wing the baby from that. Amen. To, to, <laughs> amen, Pastor Rick. You gradually wing the baby away from that milk. Well, at least you're supposed to. <laughs> to a much stronger food. Giving them a taste of real food. For example, we got vegetables and fruits, mashed potatoes and meat or whatever and so forth. Then they get a little older and now they want some meat. And they get that first taste and want more. You know how when you're eating adults and um, the baby you hold and he start looking at you. You got a piece of chicken, now he want that chicken. So we, we begin to develop for more food. We want something different. It's tired of tasting this milk. So that's how we are in the church as Christians. Sometimes we, when we come first in the church, we want to learn more about God. We have a goal to grow, but somehow we get stuck and forget the whole goal. So we still are being fed milk. Somebody know what I'm talking about. As a kid, you want to be like someone who you look up to. It could be a brother, a father, a mother, a sister, celebrity, etc. 
but the whole thing you yearn to grow. See, the need for milk is a natural instinct for a baby. And it signals the desire for nourishment that will, <clears throat> that will lead to growth. Which means this. Once we see our, our need for God's word and begin to find nourishment in Christ, our spiritual appetite should increase. Are we on the right page, y'all? So then we got to learn how to grow once we are in the church. So now we have to go down to Hebrews. Hebrews 5, verses 12 and 13. And it said, for when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye need that one teach you again, which be the first principles, the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful. I need to read that over. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age. Even those by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. In other words, in order to become mature, Christians, we must learn discernment. We must learn discernment, meaning we have to grasp and more about, grasp and we need to grasp and pick up and know more about our God. Example, you can't tell a person on the street something about God when you are doing just the same as he. You have to be an example of what God is. Amen? We have to train our minds and bodies to separate the good from the evil. Oh, I'm almost done, y'all. I'm almost done. I got another one. I think this is the last one. Chapter 2, 2 Peter, chapter 3, verses Verse 18. Come on. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Now and forever. Now and and forever. I don't know about you, but in order for me to grow, I need to know God a little more better. I need to read the Bible a little bit more. I need to study the Bible a little bit more. I need to obey God a little bit more. I need to put self aside a little bit more. I need to spread the gospel a little bit more. I need to serve God just a little bit more. I need to exercise my faith a little bit more. I need to build a relationship with God a little bit more. I need to lastly put myself aside and not be ashamed of God's gospel. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Oh, y'all, I'm not going to be up here that long. I'm sorry. I had to bend down for a minute and drop my paper. But, hey, it's good anyhow. Hey, <laughs> it's good anyhow. It's some people that's on the outside that are looking good. But good. Oh, there's some people on the outside. They look good. But underneath, the roots are starting to rot. I don't think y'all know what I'm talking about. See, some, some of the roots are getting eaten up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
question, how can your grass be green on the outside, but your roots are dying? Your growth should have a before and after. You know how when you're losing weight, you show your before and your after. Somehow our growth need to show up before and after. When I used to, when I first came to the church, I didn't know anything. I was a sinner. Oh, looking for something, looking for some help on the inside. Some of us need some help in the inside. When we come to church, we're looking for a, some help on the inside. It is something going on in our minds. It is something going on in our hearts. And I'm just here to tell you today that if you seek after, Stop sitting on that milk. We got to learn to take ourselves away from it. Amen. In order for us to grow, in order for the grass to grow, we're going to use this. You're going to have to rake it. See, once, it's, once the roots are rotting, you're going to have to rake it. See, fertilizer might not even help it. If the roots are eaten up, the fertilizer might not even help it. So it's some things you're going to have to do. It's some work that you're going to have to put in to get your grass to look greener on the outside. See, you can't just look greener on the outside. In order for a house to look good, the, out, the grass has to be completely green. But when you walk on in the inside, that, that also has to be clean. So you got to clean up the inside as well. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. So you're going to have to rake the area well. Plant the seeds over the turf. Put down some topsoil so that it can get good contact with the seed and soil. Water it early every morning. Water it at night. So, so, you're going, so just so it can germinate a little bit. You know what I'm talking about, Pastor Rick. What I'm saying is you're going to have to put in some work to get where you need to be. You're going to have to need a little bit more faith to put it, put it on in the inside. Amen? You're going to need a little bit more peace. Oh, I don't care what you say about me anymore because I'm worked on myself. Now I'm growing, y'all. It's something different. When a, when a person keeps talking about you, that same thing won't happen no more. It won't even bother you. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, just because the bills are due, you won't know how it's going to get paid. It won't even bother you. Your faith is greater than what? But we still are drinking on milk. Some of us have been going to church for years and still drinking on milk. Why are you drinking on milk? And you've been here for that long. They're throwing it up. But I'll tell you what you're going to need. You need a little joy. You need a little peace. You need a little humbleness. Oh yeah, you're gonna have to humble yourself a lot. You're gonna have to humble yourselves a lot. The thing is, you're gonna have to do a lot of things that you don't wanna do. But I serve a God that is able to make things happen. You're gonna have to grow in places you don't wanna grow. But I serve a God who can make things happen. See, you're going to have to walk a path that you may not want to walk. But I serve a God who will guide you with your footsteps. You're going to have to get there somehow in some way because you are trying to, what, grow. Tired of sitting here doing the same old things. 
Tired of sitting here coming to church and not figuring out what's the problem. Tired of figuring, trying to sit, tr sitting here trying to figure out if it's me or if I need to change the scenery. Maybe it's not the scenery. Maybe it is you. Maybe you just don't want to grow. Maybe you're scared to take a foot forward because somebody might talk about you. Because somebody got something to say. Oh, why is he preaching? I don't know. Ask God. The whole message I'm just trying to get you all today to understand is that you need to grow. You can't grow by just sitting there. You can't grow by just coming to church on Sunday. You can't even grow by just, I mean, you come here, you got good, you thinking good, you are ready to hear a good word, but then you get there Somebody has made you mad. Why is someone still making you mad? Is it not petty? Is it not petty? You are greater than what you are. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. God doesn't make mistakes. And I, gotta, I know I serve a God who can change things around. Who can turn a situation around in a minute. Is that all right, Rosetta? In a minute. But we fight over mess. Littlest things. Instead of pulling away the malice. Instead of forgetting which is behind me and pressing forth. So I'll just stop by to say that I'm just trying to grow. And if you are trying to grow, tell your neighbor, I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to grow. And you are going to grow as long as you keep your mind stayed on who? See, the Bible said that I am not of the world. I'm just in it. But some of us take the world and incorporate it into our lives and in our hearts, and we begin to acting of the world, even though we're trying to change from the past of what we used to be, because you don't want to be there no more, but you can't change from what you used to be until you get past what you used to be. Let the past be what it is. But you trying to be something new. You trying to see a better finance. You trying to get a better job. You trying to wear some nice clothes. You trying to have a different attitude. Oh yeah, you don't, you're tired of the, neg the negativity. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You tired of people talking about you, but that's behind you now. I don't need to look at you no more. I don't need to know what you looking at me, why? I don't need to know what's the reason why you wanna fight me. I don't need to know why do you keep talking about me behind my back, but what I need to know is Jesus. Keep going back and back and back and back and back and forth and back and forth. You can't rattle the fence. You can't straddle the fence. It's in Bible study one time, and the pastor talked about lukewarm. Can't be lukewarm. I can't pretend to be this. Can't pretend that my grass is green, but my roots are dead. 
then that means that's fake grass, right? Somebody know what I'm talking about. If I just had to leave y'all with anything today, I just encourage you all to grow. Yell out. If I can get you to just shout out, grow. Jesus, I want to grow. Today is the day that you grow. Today is the day that you walk in faith and not by sight. Today is the day that all things be put behind you. Today is the day that you grow. God bless you. We hope you have enjoyed watching us today. We hope that we've been an inspiration to you and your family. And friends, you may call us for prayer at area code 313 at 865-6156, telephone number. Praise the Lord. We are located, again, as I said, at 12375 Woodward Avenue. Our service is each Sunday morning at 1130. Praise the Lord. Bible study each Wednesday night at 630. We invite everyone to come out and be a part of all of our services right here. Remember, God loves you. Jesus loves you. And so do I. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Vicky Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy, D. Hattie, watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times. And you are watching Bell Global Network. Plenty more, plenty more